This is the second narrated presentation for Module 3, The Cell. Let's get started. This portion of the module discusses components of the plasma membrane, various membrane proteins, and these membrane protein functions. Physical properties that affect cells are also discussed, including solution concentration. The plasma membrane was introduced as the division between the extracellular and intercellular space. The plasma membrane is important to regulate what enters and exits the cell, and it is the part of a cell that interacts with its surroundings. Plasma membranes are highly comprised of the organic macromolecule phospholipid, which forms two layers with the hydrophobic fatty acid tails oriented towards each other. The hydrophilic heads are situated on the outside. Fluid mosaic is how to describe the plasma membrane. This means structures that are fixed in the membrane are able to move around relatively freely throughout the membrane. Proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids can be found in the phospholipid bilayer. Carbohydrates fixed in the plasma membrane function as identifiers of a cell. Every organism has unique carbohydrate identifiers. These carbohydrates allow cells to recognize and interact with each other. Proteins fixed in a plasma membrane may have different functions including transport of materials into and out of the cell, communication between cells, metabolism involving chemical reaction, and adhesion of a cell to a surface or an adjacent cell. This diagram shows the phospholipid bilayer with tails oriented toward each other, as well as different types of proteins and carbohydrates bound in the plasma membrane. Transport of molecules, including electrically charged molecules called ions into and out of the cell, is important for cellular communication, such as a nerve cell communicating with a muscle cell. Homeostasis is also maintained by balancing the concentration of molecules in cytoplasm. Molecules may move across the plasma membrane passively, that is, energy is not used, by simple or facilitated diffusion or osmosis, moving ions or molecules from a region of higher concentration to one of lower concentration. Active transport requires the cell to use energy and move ions from a region of lower concentration to one of higher concentration. Methods of moving large molecules in and out of the cell include bringing molecules into a cell through endocytosis of solids, phagocytosis, endocytosis of liquids, penocytosis, or moving molecules out of the cell through exocytosis. This diagram shows the process of diffusion where two solutions come into contact with one another. The highly concentrated solution will have dissolved particles move into the less con concentrated solution. This can also be stated, molecules diffuse down their concentration gradient. Active transport is a type of transport that requires the use of active energy, or ATP. Molecules that move via active transport move from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. Transport proteins may form ion channels that can be used for transport. Ion channels are specific for each ion. For example, sodium ion channels only allow sodium to pass across the membrane, and potassium ion channels only allow potassium to pass through the channels. Endocytosis is a type of active transport that brings molecules into the cell. The molecules are engulfed into the cell by forming a vesicle out of the plasma membrane. The molecules move toward the plasma membrane, and the plasma membrane forms a vesicle around the molecules. The vesicle then moves inside the cell. Phagocytosis is a type of endocytosis that brings solid 
substances into the cell. Pinocytosis is a type of endocytosis that brings liquid substances into the cell. Exocytosis is a type of active transport that moves substances out of the cell. Vesicles inside the cell that contain molecules that need to move out of the cell fuses with the plasma membrane. Once the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane, the molecules that are contained in that vesicle can leave the cell and the vesicle becomes a part of the plasma membrane. Osmosis is a special case of simple diffusion in which water molecules are the molecules that are exchanged between two solutions. It is important to remember that solute concentration is inversely related to solvent concentration. That is, if a solute is highly concentrated, then a solvent is less concentrated, and vice versa. This observation is depicted in this graph shown. Solution solute concentration is compared to the solute concentration inside of a cell. Isotonic refers to a solution that has the same solute concentration as the cytoplasm of a cell. Hypertonic solutions have a higher solu solute concentration than the cytoplasm of a cell. Hypotonic solutions have a lower solute concentration than the cytoplasm of a cell. This chart demonstrates the effects that different solutions have on a cell. Hypertonic solutions will cause a cell to shrink because osmotic pressure draws water out of the cell. This can be seen in the first image. Isotonic solutions will cause no effect because the osmotic pressures inside the cell and outside of the cell cancel each other out. This can be seen in the middle image. Hypotonic solutions will cause the cell to swell and burst because the higher concentration of solutes inside of the cell draws water into the cell. Remember, only water moves across the cell membrane when, when osmosis occurs. Hypotonic can be seen in the last image. This is a review of key terms and concepts relating to understanding how the plasma membrane regulates what goes in and out of a cell. The plasma membrane is a fluid mosaic mostly comprised of a phospholipid bilayer. The concentration of solutions, including the cytoplasm of a cell, affects how molecules will move between the two. Molecules tend to move down their concentration gradient. 